Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So here we are in WebGoat, which is the open web application security project where we can learn about running our ethical hacking techniques on a vulnerable web application system to learn all about ethical hacking. And over here, we have the following. Okay, so this is stage three. Okay, and it's this the following. Breaking data layer access control as regular employee, okay, exploit weak access control to view and our employee's profile. Okay, verify the access. So over here, I can log in as Tom. So I select Tom and I can enter the password as T-O-M. Okay, so this is the first name, all in lowercase. Click login. All right, so once we're in, we can see the following staff listing page. So in this case, we can see that we only have one employee. So we are only able to see ourselves in the listing of users. So when I click under view profile, okay, we will see all the details of the user who has logged in, which is ourselves. And in this case, we have the name, the salary, the credit card limit, and, and so on. So we have pretty much all the details right here on the, the profile page. So what is more interesting is about how we could possibly try to view other people's profile. So in this case, I can go back here. Okay, so we have the staff listing page. And what I can do is go under your browser, go to network settings, click settings, and click manual proxy configuration. So click OK on this, and we will have Burp Suite to help us intercept. So Burp Suite is a penetration testing tool against web application or web-based application system. So in this case, we have the community edition running here. So ensure that your proxy tab is on. So I'll use magnifier so that it is easier for you to see. So I'll go ahead over here with proxy and we have intercept. So ensure the intercept is on. So now I'll go back into Firefox and I'll go back to the page and I'll select view profile. Okay, so right here, all right, so we got a post. So this is posting over into web go to text screen and menu. So the rest are as it is. And what's really important is under the employee ID and action. Okay, so the action is view profile. And the second part is the employee ID. And a lot of times you would have an employee ID in the company you're working for, or whether you're doing a penetration testing against a company system, say a human resource system, Okay, or leave approval application system and so on. So they usually have a incremental met method for adding new employees into the company. And in this case, we have 105. So which means that highly likely there is 104 employees before the current user, Tom. Okay, and that could be some other users who has joined after Tom. So in this, with this in mind, it means that we can try to query other employees through this profile page function. So what I can do is to say, I will use a minus one. So I will be entering employee ID of one, zero, four. And the same action, viewing of profile. So I'll go ahead and click forward. And once we go back into the browser, we can see the following. You have completed stage three, okay? Bypass data layer access control. And if I scroll down further, okay, we can see the following. So in the following, we can see we have the employee 104, Eric, and we can see the salary. We can see all of their personal data. So this exposes a lot of the personal information of other employees in the company. And of course, we can do the same for every other employees who are registered in the database. So we can continuously try to pull out all of their profile details through this method. So then the next question would be, now that we are able to view someone else's profile, how can we stop or protect against such attacks? So this is the whole concept between uh, behind the idea of identity access management. So you want to ensure that as you are creating services like viewing profile, creation of accounts, updating of profiles, deletion of profiles, and, and so on, you want to have role-based access control. So different users are parked onto different groups and different groups have different accesses to different kind of functions as well as resources and services. So with the declaration of those resources, the groups of users, this would make it much easier for you to manage the access control for all of these users. And in this case, you should also code them into your application system, okay? Or you can utilize Identity Access Management Platform to help you verify the accesses that all these users have and to which services and then after which you can type
tighten up the controls and the policies so that only specific services can be accessible to users who has been granted those permissions. Okay, so once again, I hope you've learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. Remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.